PTA as a filmmaker is very, it feels like he, it's a, the movies are an organ of his subconscious sometimes. Uh, but this movie is, uh, is stripped bare and I really believe where I am. And as soon as it started with like Joe saying, the music and the cinematography and the acting, I was like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm here, I'm willing. You could just can abuse me. I don't give a I love this so much. And it never let me down. Anytime that the chocolate going down my throat got too rich, it would ease up and there'd be like cream and, and ice water. It just got better and better. I hate to talk, talk about it this way, but it's true. It got better and better. And then I start wondering what's gonna happen to these people. I was so excited when it started. I was so impressed and I, and I enjoyed so much the investment of this guy in a hole. It's just so, I just never seen anything set up that way. So yeah. perfectly without language, with no, no words, a man in a hole and making this investment in his own future and in, and, and in, like an animal, he's like an animal. And that uh, character is an animal. He's not sure, he's not in control of wanting anything. He's just pure drive. And uh, on some level, his well, before getting there, just the you could talk about that hole for as long as it was filmed, and just uh, he's alone in a hole. He's a billionaire, but he still goes to this hole. I get the sense that he, and you see throughout the movie that he continues to get full of oil, and he continues to buy his own property from the from the local realtor. He does everything by himself, uh, completely independent person. And what this leads to is a total decay of his spirit that he becomes, um, he, he just sags under the weight of, every, of everything that he accumulates. And he has this desperate desire to have himself carry on in another person, in his, in his son, to have somebody, he wants to exist in his son, but he doesn't want to make it, in, he doesn't want to give it to a, a woman. He doesn't want to share it with a woman in order to give it to his son. He wants an orphan son that's not even his blood uh, so that he can carry. It's like he wants to clone himself almost. He wants his brother because he wants someone he can trust implicitly. Now, he has that guy with the big square face who's the best period piece actor ever. Because I <laughs> right. believe that he was born in 1810. I think Paul Thomas Anderson sometimes lets, I mean, Jesus, the the in discipline of Daniel Day Lewis's performance, and even the kid um, against Paul Dano, who I think he just kind of let him off the leash and said, "You do whatever you want." I I might have said, uh, "Bring it down a little," but then it wouldn't have been. I mean, it was, it's an insane movie. The movie's not. The movie's also not a period piece about oil. It's no, a yeah. dream. It's a sick dream. It's right. I don't know where the he got this story what made him sit down and write it the way he did and film it the way he did but he the thing that i get really excited about is somebody who makes a dreamlike movie uh but knows exactly what he's doing that doesn't right. just throw mud against the wall goes like this is what it has to sound like this is what the colors this is what the oil the black smoke looks like against the sky this right. is we're gonna be with the, the colors in this movie are gonna be black navy blue uh, and tan, and that's there's not going to be any other colors in the whole movie. And this is what the music is going to sound like, and this is what his mustache is going to look like, and 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 what he looks like when he uh, when he's pissed off and with a drink in his hand. That's it. Discipline in the dreamlike movie right. is a great combination. I think he does that. This specific kind of character that is relentlessly one thing and right. unchangeable. What happens is the world around him decays and devolves until this kid who he gave this life to comes back deaf saying, I don't want any of this from you. I don't, I just want you to know, I don't, that you're nothing to me now. Well, he doesn't change at all. The thing about him is, is unchanging. Yes. And it's what happens to a person who never changes. He ends up with more, I mean, the way that that, look, there's no accidents in film design and production design. You look at the castle he's living in and the depth, the richness of the wood and the, the, the desk he sits at and his office and the, the mannerism of his, of his servant. It just goes on and on forever. 
and he's and he's a husk he's just from all those years of no nourishment to his soul like neither yeah. of them him or his brother uh are, or paul dano are after love or real human contact right. they're all greedy fucks and they're all uh confused i mean to me the thing one thing i i i'm haunted by with that movie and by haunted i mean something i can't resolve so i think about it a lot is when his son gets uh uh injured and there of course there's the obvious display of who he is by that he he works all night to cap the well before he goes near his kid but when he does he's um holding his kid if you look at it it's exactly the same pose as John Lennon naked with Yoko Ono when he's got his leg he's got his leg over him and he's holding him like this laying on his side uh kissing him and and there's so much uh love and affection yeah. in that moment and it's very confusing it's very uh i don't know everything about what it means i it's really don't and i but again i that i attribute to honest that's honest filmmaking i think there's also this absurdity that the world around him has these things like bowling and milkshakes yeah and that he's just a guy with whiskey and once in a while they bring him a milkshake he doesn't even know he's never been to a a, a place that serves milkshakes he doesn't know any he's he's an animal big up animal and th- so the that that the the dryness of his feelings at the end and like the the there's a horrible desperate look into the void of humanity that i think is very emotional it's not emotionally it doesn't have those sunny emotions it doesn't have the primary color emotions it's on another level it's a different it's a different uh, and it's pot and it's and, and it's those strange um alloyed emotions it's not gold or zinc it's brass or something it's a really fucked up strange thing that he created in that movie i've never seen it repeated i've seen a thousand movies that make me feel like all right and i know those feelings and i'm happy to have them again every time i see them in a movie yeah all the movies are not that they're not that kind of, it's a different kind of satisfaction and it's extremely uh emotional this guy's lack of love is as right. interesting and valid and emotional as other people's great look how much i love everybody things uh, there will be blood is him maturing to being a lot more honest can tell a story about a guy like that and have it have any other ending you could sit here right now and try to write 50 endings to there will be blood and they'll stink the thing of beating the guy to death with the fucking thing and then saying i'm finished um is just upsetting and it's unresolved and it's disturbing and it's uh disappointing it's and all of those are valid emotions to feel at the end of a movie i'm constantly lost in thought about that movie anytime it comes up i just walk down the street and think about it that's what a movie should do it shouldn't it shouldn't achieve its goals it shouldn't a, a great movie to me is all tattered ends like a arm was torn off and it's just blood blood in the wind It's called drainage line. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. <laughs>